consider the Wednesday, July 6th meeting of the Verona Planning Commission. Uh, first, we'll have the roll call. Mr. Sir, please. Commissioner Manley. Here. Commissioner Turk. Here. Mayor Holcomer. Here. Commissioner Horsfall. Here. Alderperson Linder is absent and excused, and Commissioners Heinzen and Lytle are also absent and excused. We do have a quorum, so we will proceed with the meeting. Next um, on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the June 6th Planning Commission meeting. Those minutes were included with your packet. What's your pleasure, please? We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turk. Were there any additions or corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. That motion carries and the minutes are approved. Next, I would accept the motion to open a public hearing for a precise implementation plan for a planned unit development located at 506, 508, and 514 Commerce Parkway. The proposed um, pr a precise implementation plan will allow for the construction of a 20,000 20 square foot building addition. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Turk. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Horsfall. All those in favor of opening the public hearing signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Mr. Sarah, would you provide the background, please? Thank you. This is a public hearing tonight for a precise implementation plan, also known as a PIP for Pure Sweet Honey, located at uh, 506, 508, and 514 Commerce Parkway. This is the step four in the plan development process. This is the last step in the plan development process. Uh, the zoning ordinance requires a public hearing before the plan commission, and this will be a recommendation tonight to the Common Council. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. With that, if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak specifically on this agenda item during the public hearing, we would ask that you would please come forward. There's a sign-up sheet at the podium. And is there anyone who wishes to come forward at this point? Is there anyone that wishes to speak on this agenda item? Anyone desiring to speak on this agenda item under public hearing? I hear the door. We'll wait just a second. I'm not seeing anyone. So with that, I would accept the motion to close the public hearing. We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? second? Second by Mr. Turk. All those in favor of closing the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried and the public hearing is closed. Mr. Sarah, anything to add, please? Thank you. Once again, the, the project is located at the intersection of Nine Mound Road and Commerce Parkway. Uh, the, the property in question is highlighted in yellow on the screen. In uh, June of 2016, the city did approve a general development plan at GDP for this site. That is step three of four of the plan development process. As part of that uh, GDP approval, there was a multiple phase expansion proposed by the applicant. Uh, the proposed 20,000 20 square foot warehouse addition is consistent with the recently approved P P uh, GDP. Uh, it is the first phase of an expansion. Uh, there are also other phases that have been called out in the GDP as well. The proposed building addition does conform to all the required setbacks of the urban industrial zoning district and it is also consistent with the previously approved GDP. Once again, the proposed addition is highlighted in the, the kind of sketched area here. Uh, the future expansions are also planned along Nine Mound Road and potential expansion uh, to the east as well. Staff has no concerns with the proposed building location. The applicant is proposing one new access point from Commerce, Commerce Parkway. Uh, the proposed access point will be located in, in this location and that will be for a new loading dock. Uh, staff has no concerns with the access as Commerce Parkway is a lightly traveled roadway and the access should not create any traffic conflicts. One item to note is a photometric plan was not submitted uh, with this proposal. The applicant will need to submit a photometric plan for this new delivery area. No additional parking is being planned with the, this addition, but there is a potential for future parking uh, off the loading dock as well as part of a future phased expansion. Uh, staff has no concerns with the parking on the site because there is sufficient parking to accommodate the number of employees. Two proposed stormwater ponds are being provided on the site to accommodate stormwater and drainage. Uh, stormwater management plans and details have been submitted to the city engineer for review. The applicant will need to provide that, uh, the stormwater for this addition and also the previously approved additions in 2011. 
A detailed landscaping plan was submitted with the site as well and does conform to the zoning requirements and staff has no concerns the landscaping plan. The proposed addition uh, would match the existing warehouse building that's out there. It would be uh, gray in color and also have metal siding. The design and architectural materials are consistent with the other projects within the industrial park and staff has no concerns with the uh, proposed design of the building. So that staff recommends that plan commission recommend to the common council approval of the precise implementation plan for Pier Sweet Honey Farm to construct a 20,000 20 square foot warehouse addition for the with the following condition that one prior to the issuance of building permits a revised uh, excuse me a photometric plan shall be approved by the director of planning and development. Now the applicant is here tonight they'd be happy to answer any questions the plan commission has. Thank you, Mr. Sayre. Um, and this agenda item, if we were to take action, would be a recommendation to the Common Council. Uh, this is an item that has been before us before, so nothing really new here this evening. Questions, comments, potential motions? Mr. Horsfall, please. Yeah, just a, just a comment in the meeting <coughs> minutes. Um, Mr. Linder had asked if there was concerns with trucks ex exiting the property. Mr. Montas said that they will have to review the dimensions before approving the final plan. Has that been taken care of? Mr. Sarah? I haven't. Uh, Mr. Montpass is on vacation this week, but my understanding is he's looked at the plans and hasn't raised any issues with these. Okay. We also did discuss this project again today at a staff meeting, and I know Public Works Department didn't raise any concerns with the, the access and, and location of the, of, the, of the driveway there, so I, I think we're okay with that. Okay, thanks. Other questions, comments, potential motions? Mr. Manley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Adam, uh, from a procedural standpoint, we're at the, the precise implementation stage for, for this particular review. If the applicant decided to move forward with the building that's labeled future edition phase three in lot number 17, would that trigger a whole new PUD process review or would that be just a, a site plan review? Mr. Sarah? Yeah, the, the intent of the expansions in here would just be PIP reviews. So uh, you have the first phase, that's one PIP. The second phase would be an additional PIP. And phase three, if that would go forward even next month, it would just be a PIP. So the intent is that GDP has set this up so then every time they would come back for an expansion, they would just need to submit for a PIP. Okay, thank you. Other questions, comments? Mr. Horsfall, please. At this time, I'd like to recommend that the Common Council approve the precise implementation plan for the Pure Sweet Honey Farm to be constructed on 20,020 square foot warehouse addition with the following condition. Prior to issuance of the building permit, a revised photometric plan shall be approved by the Director of Planning and Development. We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Turk. Questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. That will be on the agenda for next week, Monday evening. Next, we have a public hearing for a conditional use permit for a proposed 10,782 square foot group daycare center to be located at 590 Hometown Circle. Do we have a motion to open the public hearing? We have a motion by Mr. Turk. Is there a second? second? Second by Mr. Manley. All those in favor of opening the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. We are in the public hearing stage. Mr. Sayre, if you would provide the background, please. Thank you. A uh, conditional use permit is required for the proposed group daycare center to be located at 590 Hometown Circle. Group daycare centers require a conditional use permit in the suburban commercial zoning district of which this property is zoned. Uh, by ordinance, uh, a public hearing is required before the plan commission, and this is a recommendation to the Common Council. Thank you, Mr. Sayre. With that, agenda item 5A, if we were to take action, it would be a recommendation to the Common Council. Agenda item uh, 5B would go to the plan, uh, plan commission approval only. So with that, we are in the public hearing stage. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this agenda item? Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Going to third and final time, anyone who wishes to speak on this agenda item? Seeing none, I would accept the motion to close the public hearing. We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? 
Seconded by Mr. Turk. All those in favor of closing the public hearing signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Sayre, anything to add, please? Once again, the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for the property highlighted in yellow on the screen. Uh, the site is located immediately south of Farm and Fleet and east of McDonald's and the Super 8 Hotel. Um, the property is zoned suburban commercial with a planned unit development overlay and is also part of the downtown over overlay district. Uh, the plan commission did provide an initial review of this project at the June 2016 plan commission meeting. Comments from the plan commission include concerns about the, the roof being too steep, the pitch of the roof was being was, was too steep for the property. The building itself, uh, the proposed building does meet required setbacks of the suburban commercial zoning district and also of the downtown overlay district. If you recall, the downtown overlay district also has minimum and maximum setback requirements. Uh, the building does conform to those requirements. It also has a, a minimum height requirement that the building conforms to as well. The applicant is proposing 32 parking stalls for this property. 36 spaces are required by ordinance. Uh, the last review of this project, there was additional parking that was provided further to the west here. Um, there's a dashed line, as you can see in the site plan. Uh, that is actually an existing easement that has, I believe, stormwater utilities located in that area. So the applicant has, has made an, an attempt to, to uh, I guess, avoid that completely, which is, uh, staff does appreciate that. But as part of that, uh, the applicant has, has lost uh, four of those parking spaces. Uh, the applicant is proposing a to have shared parking with Farm and Fleet to the north. Um, I did receive today a draft shared parking agreement w that the applicant has with Farm and Fleet. Um, if this does move forward, uh, that's something that re would be required as part of the approval to have that recorded uh, for the property, that, that shared parking that remain in place. Uh, further, if, if the shared parking is approved by the plan commission, Staff recommends that a, a, a pedestrian connection be provided between the, the, the Rainbow Child Care Center and also the Farm and Fleet parking lot to provide uh, pedestrian access for people parking in, in the Farm and Fleet uh, parking lot. Um, assuming both those items happen, the, the shared parking agreement and the pedestrian connection, uh, staff has no concerns with the parking in the property or, and the shared parking. Access to the site is planned from home to hometown circle. Uh, it is unchanged from the previous previous uh, access point that was provided to the plan commission so staff has no concerns with the vehicle access uh, one comment staff has uh, is that the applicant should provide a pedestrian connection from the internal sidewalk to the public sidewalk along hometown circle stormwater management for this project can be accommodated in the existing stormwater pond which is located to the to the south of the site along Vernon Avenue uh, staff has no concerns with stormwater at this time uh, the building itself is similar in design to what was previously approved previously reviewed by the plan commission. The applicant is proposing split face CMU, brick and fiber cement siding. Uh, dormers have been added along the roof line to help break up the elevation. Further cupolas are also proposed in the north and south elevations to provide additional details. Uh, ample windows are also being provided on the site to, to provide additional architectural variation in the building. One concern that was raised at the, at the June plan commission, as I previously stated, was the, the roof pitch was, was too steep. Uh, the applicant has provided uh, some actual real pictures of other projects that are located around the country. I believe this one is from uh, Michigan. Um, I think the I think probably what's going on is the the renderings, the the architectural renderings are are making the the, the roof pitch look steeper than what it actually is. Uh, and this one I believe is from North Carolina or South Carolina. But once again, I think uh, the scale of this roof is, my opinion, is is appropriate. Uh, it's not inconsistent with what else we have in the city and and. I think it's acceptable to what we've been looking for. Uh, for all conditional use permits, we go through the general and specific findings of facts, and we do find that the conditional use permit meets those requirements. So staff does recommend the Planning Commission recommend to the Common Council approval of a conditional use permit for a group daycare <coughs> center land use to be located at 590 Hometown Circle to allow for the construction of a 10,782 square foot group daycare center. And two, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the site plan to allow for the construction of a 10,782 square foot group daycare center at 590 Hometown Circle with the following conditions. One, prior to the issuance of building permits, the applicant shall enter into a shared parking agreement with Farm and Fleet. Two, the applicant shall provide a sidewalk connection to Farm and Fleet park, to, to the Farm and Fleet parking lot. 
three, the applicant shall provide a sidewalk connection from the north side of the building to the public sidewalk and hometown circle. And four, the applicant shall submit a revised photometric plan for review and approval by the Director of Planning and Development. I know the applicant is here tonight and they'd be happy to answer any questions the Planning Commission has. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. With that, you've heard the explanation, the background, questions, comments, potential motions. We're on agenda item 5A. Questions, comments? Mr. Turk, please. Uh, at this time, I'll recommend that, or move to recommend that the Common Council approve a conditional use permit for a group daycare center land use at 590 Hometown Circle to allow for the construction of a 10,782 square foot group daycare center. And Mr. Turk, are you including the contingencies? No. Oh, that's in the second one, I'm sorry. Thank you. So we have a motion by Mr. Turk. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Manley. Questions or comments on the motion? This is to approve the CUP. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Sayre, anything to add on 5B? Again, 5B is, uh, is action only approval by the Planning Commission. City Council approval is not necessary. Questions, comments, potential motions? Mr. Manley? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion to approve the site plan to allow for the construction of a 10,782 square foot group day care center at 590 Hometown Circle with the four conditions listed in the staff report. We have a motion by Mr. Manley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turk. Again, you've heard the background. Uh, the contingencies are listed. Any questions? Mr. Horsfall, please. Adam, did I hear you correct? The first one is taken care of? I thought you said they met with the, no, not the first one. I, the shared parking agreement for me, please? I've seen a draft of it. I think okay. we want to make sure that it gets recorded with the property. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval of the site plan review with the contingencies outlined in Mr. Sayre's report Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. <clears throat> and again, the uh, first item under 5A, the uh, City Council action, that will be next week, Monday as well. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, Kevin Yaska from JSD. We did have Patrick Fenton from uh, Rainbow Child Care Center here today. Um, just wanted to have a quick discussion. I had talked to Adam about this item uh, for the orientation of this building, which was brought up at the last planning commission, and how there is an access restriction on <coughs> the um, right property line there, and the lower right portion of the property line. And you know, I know that we just received approval for this site plan. If something were to be reworked for next month, you know, and I know that there's also an ordinance that um, doesn't allow for parking to be on the front of this building, but um, we have a quick discussion on on that item and whether or not this lot would have any type of exception since we have that outlot in front of it with the stormwater management pond it's not quite all the way up onto East Verona Avenue and it's tucked back a little ways Mr. Sarah please so I think the question Mr. Yaska is, is, is asking of just uh, Obviously, any changes to the site plan will have to come back to the Planning Commission for approval. But I think the question that's being raised is currently the parking lot uh, has been planned uh, north of the existing building. And I think the question that's being asked to the Planning Commission is, uh, I lost it here. Um, if the, the building were to be pushed, say, to the north here and the parking lot being placed along this er location here, um, would that be acceptable to the Planning Commission or not? Uh, the ordinance itself, the question is the downtown overlay district, which basically states that parking lots cannot be located between uh, the building and the street. Uh, so typically uh, along Verona Avenue, we, we have not allowed those parking lots to be located between the building and street. We've allowed the parking lots to be located, you know, abutting uh, the building off to the side, but not between the building and the street. I think the only difference in this situation is that you do have that 
uh, city-owned stormwater pond to the south there. Um, but, you know, I think the question to the Planning Commission is, if the applicant came back with a revised site plan, are there any initial comments on the reaction uh, of that? I think from a staff level perspective, I, th I believe the intent of the ordinance has been to uh, ensure that there, ha there wouldn't be parking lots between the, the street and, and the building. Now, the pond does complicate that, but um, it does kind of fly in the face of the intent and what else we've done elsewhere in, a lo in this overlay district. But um, I guess if the Planning Commission has any comments or feedback to the applicant, I'm sure they would appreciate that to provide themselves with some direction here. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Mr. Horsfall? Uh, I agree with Adam that I think the look of it from the roadway to the pond to the building, I would prefer that look. And plus, it pushes the parking or the access farther away from the roadway, too, which I think I like that better also. So I, I would be against that change. Other comments? Mr. Manley? Thank you. I, I guess a, a, a question I would have is, is there a, a really compelling reason why you would want to reorientate orientate the building? Sure. Yeah, and I, th I think that reasoning would be because our face is the front side of the building. It's pretty typical and standard to have that visibility and your front the front side of the building with all of that traffic on East Verona Ave. Granted, we have revised this elevation to have two faces almost, but when you look at that front front elevation, and that's your main entry, that's your entrance for these parents, that's your entrance for eyes off of East Verona Avenue as people drive past this site. So it's it's it's, uh, it's just not quite standard for what Rainbow likes to do, and um, we feel that it it would suit the the area of you know hometown circle. I understand that. All the parking lots are in back there, but we have this out lot, which is kind of throwing a curveball in there. Um, and it provides that buffer space off of East Verona where you're not getting that urban feel. So. Okay, thank you. Yep. Other comments? My, my preference as well would be to um, leave it as it currently is. I'm not saying that I would necessarily oppose oppose it, but my preference would be to keep it the way it is. Okay, Mr. Manley. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, I guess I I don't have real strong feelings one way or the other. I, I mean, I support the ordinance. Um, I think the ordinance was put in place for a reason, and I support th that reason. But I, I guess I do see the the stormwater pond is being somewhat mitigating. When you look at how the proximity of the parking lot that, you know, there is for Dairy Queen, for example, in terms of how many feet it is from East Verona Avenue versus where this parking lot would be, you know, fully behind the, the stormwater pond, it would still be quite a bit further back than, than than what we're looking at for Dairy Queen and some of the other properties. <clears throat> um, ha having said that, however, I, I guess I would ask a question f for staff to maybe look into with our legal counsel. Is, do we have the authority to waive th that requirement uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, and if we do, then it seems like this is a request that we could at least, in theory, grant. If we don't, would that require a, an exception that would need to trigger the PUD process? Or I guess I would be interested in knowing if we can accommodate that. If we wanted to, can we accommodate that request under our our existing ordinance. Mr. Sarah? I think, I think in this situation, it's probably an interpretation of what it says. I think, I think the, the difference in this one is you do have a pond in between it. So, I mean, you could, as the applicant is kind of arguing that there isn't a street frontage there. So should that count towards uh, what the requirement is or not? I mean, I guess I can, I can ask the city attorney that question. Um, ultimately, if he says, 
I, I suspect he's going to say it's an interpretation of the ordinance and not how the plan commission interprets it. But if he says no, you can't, then you're obviously then looking at the PUD process or you're looking at a, at a variance, and most likely the PUD process is the, would be the way to go. And if you would, if you would just introduce yourself for our benefit and those watching at home, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor. Uh, my name is Patrick Fenton. I'm the, uh, the president of Rainbow Child Care Center. The only thing I wanted to add or would like to add is that, <coughs> pardon me, uh, by doing that, we then wouldn't have to get, we would meet our parking requirement as well. So it was just, that was just one more thing that I wanted to add. It was a question I was going to ask myself, so thank you for that. One other item too, um, if you look at a, this site from a grading standpoint, flipping things will help a lot. Right now we're reverse draining up a hill. Uh, we've, we've accommodated that by putting in walls, lifting the site certain ways and um, flushing the water out onto hometown, um, piping it out there and then down to the outlaws. But if we flip this site around, it would make things a little bit easier. Um, so just wanted to add that as well. Mr. Sarah, please. I guess the one thing that I'll note about flipping it as well, access on this site will be challenging. There is an access restriction that's in the plat. And I think it's indicated on the site plan uh, that's on the screens in front of you. So I believe the approximate kind of dash line here, uh, that is an, an access restriction that is was recorded with the, uh, the, the farm and fleet plat <coughs> in 2007-2008. So that's one item that the applicant would have to kind of work through of. Right where that driveway would go and the location of it, but um, that could prove to be challenging. Right. Something we haven't quite explored yet, but we wanted to have this discussion um, to get a feel and then work with Adam, you know, in the coming days here, just in case we do decide to uh, try and tackle this. So we appreciate the time and um, thank you. And we're excited to be here. <laughs> excited to be part of the community. Today. Thank you. Well, I think as far as procedurally, we could take uh, We'll still have the recommendation to the Common Council. Go to the Common Council on Monday. Um, if there's a desire and decision to uh, make additions on the site plan uh, review or revisions to that, um, then Adam would need to know if it's coming back next month at the Planning Commission meeting. So we'd have a little time on that, but we'll still plan on having the Council take action on the COP on Monday then. I wish there was a few more people because I'm split. You get a couple who don't like it and a couple that may want it. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I, and I want to be a, a good steward of the community and everything. So, you know, obviously we, we're up here and flew here from Detroit to kind of get some information, you know, get some feedback from you on that issue. Um, can you give me a little bit more help? Should I kind of just stay pat and let it go? Or sh is it, Adam, is it worthwhile? I, we did a quick, uh, quick drawing of the entrance, and if we shift the building a little bit to the, uh, is that east, um, the west? I'm sorry, shift it to the west. Uh, we think we can get there, as far as the entranceway, following your the, the hash mark of where we can come on in. Mr. Sir, I, I think it's worthwhile to look at it. I mean, it's up to the planning commission. I think your challenges are going to be that the access restriction. I think that. Yes. That 25 foot setback is going to be challenging too. If you're pushing the building west, I think you're already at that 25 foot setback. You're pretty pretty darn close to it. So I, it's going to be really tight. I mean, but ultimately, I guess you know, it's going to be up to the planning commission to decide what, what what they will support or not. So, yeah. <laughs> functionally, from the site standpoint, I, I I question if you can get the work. It's going to be really tight. So, but Mr. Horsfall, please. And just from a, a flow of the traffic. Jeff, is your mic on, please? My bad. Um, the way that the driveway now lines up kind of with the other road that goes east-west, so it seems to flow better at that intersection. But if you move it down, then we got a road coming over from the east and then your driveway, which is offset. It just, to me, it doesn't flow. Um, plus, I, I like the idea of having you know, the water and then your building just right there. And I think, I mean, you could spruce up the front or the, whatever that side that faces that and achieve what I think you're looking for, but that's just my opinion. Well, I, your, your opinion is important and I truly appreciate everybody's help here. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
With that, we are on agenda item number six, which is discussion and possible action regarding extraterritorial certified survey map to create three lots at 7669 County Trunk Highway PD in the town of Verona. And if we were to take action here this evening, it would be a recommendation to the Common Council. Mr. Sayer, if you'd provide the background, please. Thank you. The town is requesting to create three lots at 7669 County Highway PD. Uh, the lots in question are located at the southwest corner of County Highway PD and uh, Country View Road uh, in the town of Verona. Uh, the applicant's proposing to land division to create a parcel for the future town hall site and then they would sell the remaining land to Epic Systems Corporation. Uh, the proposed land division is, adja is adjacent to the city of Verona. Uh, on the map in front of you is the, the red line is the city boundaries. Um, so it is, w is within our ETJ review area. Uh, the proposed CSM was submitted to the city on June 9th of, of 2016. Uh, that was prior to the adoption of the city town boundary agreement, so, uh, which was adopted on June 20th. Since the CSM was submitted prior to the adoption of that boundary agreement, this land division is being reviewed based upon the city's ETJ land division ordinance. Just to point out that future land divisions uh, within this type of area would be reviewed by a joint uh, planning committee that's being established as part of the town and the city. So in the future, most likely these will not be coming to the planning commission. Um, the land division is uh, on the screen before you. Uh, lot one would be approximately one acre in size. It would be sold to Epic. Lot two it's approximately 16 acres and lot three I believe is approximately uh, uh, 11, 11 acres in size. Uh, the town is still currently going through the review of this process, this, this land division as well. It did go to their plan commission last week. Uh, there was a recommendation from the town plan commission to combine lots one and two together. Uh, so there's the chance that the CSM may become a, a two lot CSM instead of a three lot CSM. Uh, so the town is still kind of working through those details, and ultimately this will go to the con will go to the town board next Tuesday. Staff did review the land division based upon our ETJ zoning ordinance requir ordinance requirements and finds that it does conform to the requirements of our ordinance. Um, so with that, staff does recommend the planning commission recommend the common council approval of the ETJ certified survey map at 7669 County Highway PD with the following condition. That minor changes to the CSM, including reducing the number of, number of lots, can be approved by the Director of Planning and Development. Uh, so the intent of that condition would be if the town decides to modify this slightly by uh, combining lots one and two together, uh, that'd be something I could administratively approve and not have to take back to the, the Planning Commission and Council. The Town Administrator Planner is here tonight, and I'm sure she'd be happy, happy to answer any questions that the Planning Commission has. Questions or comments from Planning Commission members? Mr. Horsfall, please. So, Adam, I don't know if you just tabled it and let the commission from the town and the Verona figure it out at some later point. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that comment from the back of the room. No. What if we just table it and then when you kind of get it figured out, just let the new joint Planning Commission from the city and the town get together and just figure it out versus right. having us... Sure. Come back and to Adam, whatever it would have to be. And that would certainly make sense, but the town is under a little bit of time pressure right now because we are selling the land to Epic and we're using the proceeds to <laughs> offset the cost of the new town hall. So for us, literally, time is money right now. <laughs> I take that back, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Other questions or comments for Ms. Arnold as long as she's at the podium? I'm not seeing any. Uh, further questions, comments, or potential motions? Mr. Horsfall, please. At this point, I'd like to recommend to the, um, to the Common Council approve the extraterritorial um, certified survey map to sell, create three lots um, at 7669 County Highway PD. And, and any changes will be approved by the city planner, something like that. That works. So we have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Turk. Questions or comments on the motion? Uh, I would just add that I'm very comfortable with the action that we're taking here this evening and I would um, urge you to vote in favor of the motion. For the questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. And Amanda, that will be on the council agenda for Monday evening. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Now we have discussion and possible action regarding site, site plan review to allow for the construction of a 4,800 square foot open storage building at 421 South Nine Mound Road and 408 Venture Court. Mr. Sayre, if you'd provide the background, please. Thank you. Xander Solutions is requesting approval to construct a 4,800 square foot open storage building at 421 South Nine Mound Road. Uh, the property in question is, is highlighted on the screen in yellow. In November of 2015, the city approved a conditional use permit to allow outdoor storage on the property and the parking lot expansion. Since the 2015 approval, uh, Xander Solution has moved onto the property and has determined additional covered storage is needed to serve the business. Uh, the proposed outdoor storage building requires site plan approval from the plan commission. The proposed outdoor storage building is located uh, approximately in this location uh, in the kind of hashed area there. Uh, it would abut the Military Ridge Trail along the North Property Line. The city had previously approved an outdoor storage area in this same exact location. The only difference in, from now is they're proposing to cover it instead of it having to be uncovered. Uh, the proposed building would be set back 12 feet from the trail and approximately 20 feet from the West Property Line. Uh, staff has no concerns the proposed setback. Access to the site will be un will remain unchanged. One concern that was raised during the public hearing for the 142 Paoli Street project, which was, which was discussed at the uh, June Plan Commission meeting, was on street parking on, on Nine Mountain Road. Um, Xander Solutions has recently completed the the paving of their parking lot, and parking on, on Nine Mountain Road has drastically improved. Uh, staff has no concerns with with parking right now. Uh, due to the fact that the, the lot has been paved and the employees are parking now in the parking lot again. Uh, the building itself would, would be constructed into an existing berm on the property. It would be uh, have a natural brown look. Um, staff has no concerns with the building design. It's, it's in an industrial park. It's, it's a typical type industrial looking building. Um, so we have no concerns with the, the view of it. And plus, it, it will not be highly visible. So that staff recommends the plan commission waive the initial review and approve the site plan to allow for the construction of a 4,800 square foot open storage building at 421 South Nine Mound Road and 408 Venture Court. Thank you, Mr. Sayre. And again, this is site plan review, so it is uh, action by the plan commission. Uh, does not need to go to the council. Questions or comments? Questions, comments, potential motions? Mr. Manley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion to waive the initial review <clears throat> and to approve the site plan to allow the construction of a 4,800 square foot open storage building at 421 South Nine Mound Road and 408 Venture Court. We have a motion by Mr. Manley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turk. Questions or comments on the motion? Mr. Horsfall, please. What is wellhead protection area for a zoning? It's not important to the question, but I've Mr. Sir, never seen that before. So around every well, we have a, a well pro protection area, which basically ensures that uh, uses and uh, hazardous materials aren't located within a certain proximity of the, the city well. So if there were to be a spill of, say, oil or something that could potentially damage the city drinking water, we make sure we can keep those contaminants out of those certain areas. So there's a certain area around each well, which I think is approximately 1,000 thousand feet in diameter but it varies um, so it's a the intent of that is just to protect the city municipal drinking water and this property part of it is located within one within that distance of one of our wells so is the owner here by chance I believe the representative is here so what are you, are you storing something not that it's potentially hazard but yeah I'm kind of pitch I'm Gary Blazek with Vierbecker Associates I'm filling in for a colleague of mine who's on vacation so I, I don't I won't be able to answer detailed okay. questions like I was here to try and address the parking and stuff but I can certainly get back to you the basic gist is, is they they need some more uh, storage they underestimated what they were looking for originally what what do they store I, I think you know when we talked about this back in November I, I believe there's some diesel or gasoline fuel out there and one of the requirements the plan Commission put on that initial approval was the tank to be double walled to ensure that if there was a spill, uh, that the there's a I say catch in place. Um, I believe that was the only kind of potential concern from a material standpoint. Okay. Uh, there's outdoor just uh, items used within their construction process. 
Um, they do a lot of I believe waterproofing is what the business does. Okay. Um, so there's this general construction construction equipment that's uh, that's on the site. I think some of it might be insulation, some of it's just a variety of materials. The only one that we had that concern with was the the diesel tank, and we, it, as a condition of approval from the planning commission and council, was that to be double walled. So we should be okay. Is that typical for when you have a a well wellhead protection area? Does to it require that? I believe they're they're voluntarily doing it already. I think their their old facility already had that in place. I know when, when Mr. Gunlock was here, that was one of the items that he insisted that we have that as a condition, um, and that just basically ensures that there is a spill that it doesn't come gushing out. That if there is a spill, hopefully the second wall will, will catch that by the time there, there's we know what's going on. It's but typical it's, it's in a lot of communities. Yeah. yeah. The DNR, for the most part, regulates <coughs> what can and cannot be done in wellhead protection areas. Other questions or comments? The motion that is before us is to approve the site plan review. I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Thank you. We're on agenda item number eight, which is uh, discussion. Uh, and we're not looking at any action this evening. Initial site plan review and conditional use permit review for a proposed 2,800 16 square foot restaurant to be located at 110 Keenan Court. Mr. Sarah, please. Thank you. The applicant is requesting initial review to construct a 2,800 square foot restaurant at 110 Keenan Court. This parcel is located immediately west of the Pizza Ranch, which was recently opened. In 2015, the city did previously approve a 3,600 square foot retail building for this lot, but construction never moved forward. The proposed restaurant requires site plan approval and a conditional use permit for the proposed use. So once again, the site in question is, is highlighted in, in yellow on your screen there. Uh, the, the site itself is lot two on the, on the diagram before you. Um, the Pizza Ranch is located in, in the yellow parcel here. Uh, fitness Studio, which we approved this year, is located in the green area. Daycare is in the identified as Lot 5 on here in the red. And then bl the blue area is currently vacant, but the applicant is, is showing a, what a potential building could look like in that location. The proposed restaurant, though, would be set back uh, approximately 25 feet from Verona Avenue and uh, appears to meet the required side and rear yard setbacks. The building will be 21 feet tall and appears to meet the minimum height requirements of the downtown overlay district. The zoning ordinance requires 32 parking spaces for the proposed restaurant. The overall parking in this kind of orange, yellow, and green quadrant has uh, 142 spaces, which are shared by the Pizza Ranch, the Fitness Studio, and the Future Gus's Diner. The Pizza Ranch requires 74 spaces, True Studio requires 30 spaces, and Gus's Diner requires 32 spaces so for a total of 136 spaces. So it does, as overall, meet the minimum parking requirements. Uh, the intent of this whole area, if you recall, was when it was approved was to have shared parking am amongst these uses. Um, so this proposed request does meet the intent of that. Stormwater management facilities were provided when the Pizza Ranch project was approved. Uh, the applicant will need to verify the information that was submitted in 2015 to ensure that it is still accurate and consistent with what we had previously approved. Uh, the building itself, the applicant is proposing to use brick, stone veneer, pre precast concrete, and alu aluminum to provide a retro 1950s looking look to the building. Uh, elevations for the south facing side, which faces Verona Avenue, were, were not provided. Uh, the one on the screen before you is facing north tor towards the, the parking lot, and it will be the main entrance. The downtown overlay district requires windows be included on the south elevations. Uh, obviously, additional uh, details will need, to provided, be, will need to be provided to the plan commission and, and staff to provide a full review. Uh, initially, and looking at this elevation, uh, staff is comfortable with the proposed look at the building. It provides that kind of retro look to it, but does incorporate uh, some of the other materials that have been used in other projects in, the, in this location. So initially, staff uh, has no concerns with, with the design itself. But staff does recommend the plan commission review the submitted materials and provide feedback to the applicant. Uh, the applicant is here tonight, and he'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm uh, Tim. We're currently operating Gus's Diner in uh, Sun Prairie with my uh, family, and we're looking to um, expand in uh, Verona um, and operate a couple of businesses, and uh, we. You know, we've done our research in Verona, and it looks like a really nice community, and we would be more than happy to uh, 
open up a restaurant here hopefully in the future good could you give us your first and last name please tim salimi tim can you spell the last name s-e-l-i-m-i -I. okay thank you yep questions comments from plan commission mr manley please thank you mr mayor um i know it's just an initial review um but i i'll i would say that i i think first of all uh, very happy to see a, a restaurant coming second of all from a from a design standpoint um i, I think we'll definitely want to see four-sided architecture for the for the site plan to review or at least you know for renderings for four sides and and uh, to the point that mr sayer had that because the south elevation will be facing West Verona Avenue, we'll, we, and you, you know this, we typically, uh, you know, like to see a, a higher level of architecture than you, maybe typically w would have on the on the back uh, right. of, of a building. But um, otherwise, I, I think it looks nice. It, it's something that looks unique, and um, I'd be excited to have this business in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Other, Mr. Horsfall, please. Uh, I just, it looks like it matches more with the Dairy Queen and um, the other buildings that are to the west of this building, where the Pizza Ranch has kind of a certain look to it. So it's, I know you got to kind of somehow transition maybe, but uh, I don't know. It just, Seems you know. Do you see well, what I'm you know? I'm getting at uh, with the, how the other buildings are uh, across the driveway. You know, have a flat roof, and then you have Pizza Ranch with uh, what it looks like. It just the yeah. the current uh, Sun, uh, Gus's Diner Sun Prairie is more chrome and, and and stainless steel throughout the whole building, and um, on the sides it's a uh, stuccoed. And then for Verona, um, I think we were told that kind of we kind of need to incorporate some brick look to that as well. I think that's what kind of makes the look. A little bit more like the other ones you can't really incorporate wood kind of look right. like the pizza ranch has because it's a totally different concept of a building um, i think that's why you might be seeing those yeah is there a way to when you come back see you know kind of a picture with pizza ranch here and your building next to it to kind of get a feel for how that looks um yeah we can put both of those next to each other Bob, have you seen the one in uh, Verona or the one in Sun Prairie? It's very much a kind of a retro diner type of look or whatever, so we're trying to carry some of that through right. at the same time into that. Whereas Pizza Ranch had its own kind of like corporate look there too or whatever, so we're kind of like right. blending the two of them. Yeah, if somehow, because then once you get over to like Dairy Queen and Taco Bell, that's kind of all different from what you're right. doing. So if you come out and figure a transition to the other side, I'd, if you're a smart guy, you can figure it out. <coughs> So I guess I'm confused because you just said the Dairy Queen and they look a little different, but earlier you said they look the same. So Well, they look more like your building because they have a flat roof. Okay, and I then you, you have Pizza Ranch, which has you know their roof and a lot of wood. So if you so can somehow get you from one side to the other side with making it. So, so is it more the building? Kind of going yeah. from one to is the it other. more the roof the concern or is it more the actual material being used? without seeing them side by side i think the material you're looking at using looks good it's just you know it's, you got a big p pitched roof and then you got a your building's flat and i don't i don't know how you guys feel but it's and it, i think you can figure out something to make it try to transition so other comments other feedback i think perhaps just being able to see it on a diagram on yeah, a photo would, would be helpful yeah we can insert both of them together too we've got them all on there so we can put everything sure. in one, one plan for them. other feedback well, we agree on the four-sided so it'll be you won't be able to tell the back from the front more often. yeah they look very almost identical so okay well we would just urge you to uh, continue working with mr sayer and uh, we look forward to to uh, taking action at a future date Thank you for being here this evening. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And ladies, thank you. Next, we're on agenda item number nine, which we're not looking at any action uh, this evening either, is initial site plan review and conditional use permit review for a proposed 6,000 square foot restaurant with outdoor volleyball courts to be on lot 28 at Liberty Business Park. 
Mr. Sarah, please. Uh, thank you. The applicant's, the applicant's requesting initial view to construct a 6,000 square foot restaurant on lot 28 in Liberty Business Park. Uh, lot 28 is highlighted in yellow on the screen here. The proposed restaurant will be located along Laser Street in northeast of Sugar River Pizza. The project requires site plan approval, a conditional use permit, a zoning tax amendment, and the relocation of a previously platted Laser Street. <coughs> site plan itself the, the building would be set back approximately 25 feet from laser street uh, staff has no initial concerns with the building placement the proposed patio uh, along the north side of the building uh, appears to be encroaching into the required 25 foot setback and would need to be removed from that setback area the volleyball courts uh, will be located southeast of the building uh, staff has no concerns with the proposed location of, of that area the applicant is proposing 94 parking spaces with this project. Uh, the restaurant itself will have approximately 200 seats, which requires 67 parking spaces by ordinance. Uh, staff has no concerns the number of parking spaces. Uh, the parking lot is immediately adjacent to lot 26, which is a building that we approved a few months ago uh, and that is currently starting construction. This entire area, including the lot 26 and the Sugar River Pizza to the southwest, was planned as uh, overall as <coughs> larger shared parking area for all uses it's currently under one ownership so staff has no concerns with the, the overall parking uh, for this proposed use and also the overall area access is planned for two access points from laser street uh, the existing access point here is currently installed and being used by the sugar river pizza building um, access is also available from uh, liberty drive as a right in right out the third access point uh, the applicant is proposing would be from a Laser Street on the east side there. The easternmost access point would require the extension of, of Laser Street. It would also re require the uh, replatting and reconfiguration of this roadway. It's the road itself, uh, as you can kind of see on the screen here, initially was planned to kind of hook to the southeast. Uh, the applicant is proposing to to straighten that roadway out and, and kind of make it go straight east west. Uh, that's one thing that the, the staff is recommending the planning commission provide feedback to the applicant on of the relocation of, of that street. The proposed building itself, uh, the applicant is proposing to the building would contain stone and, and EFIS. Uh, only two elevations were included in the packet, um, but initially uh, staff is recommending that additional stone be added to the building to, to match the other buildings uh, in, in, the, in the development. Uh, further, staff recommends a significant amount of windows be included on the north facing elevation, which will face Laser Street. Uh, finally, staff also recommends the, the, the outdoor patio seating area. Uh, the applicant review the fence height requirement uh, if they're planning and have alcohol service in that area. Uh, the city does have a requirement that all fences with alcohol have to be a minimum 48 inches tall to meet the requirements of the, the police department and also the building inspection department. So that's one item that we'll have to review as part of the final review of the site. Um, one thing to point out is the use does require a zoning tax amendment. The proposed volleyball courts are classified as an outdoor commercial entertainment land use. Um, outdoor commercial, commercial entertainment land uses are currently only allowed in the urban commercial zoning district, not in the suburban commercial zoning district. Uh, the applicant will need to request an amendment to the city zoning ordinance to allow this type of use. The Planning Commission did discuss uh, outdoor, com we discussed outdoor commercial entertainment land uses in October of 2013. That was for a proposed project that is actually in the location of the Gus's Diner and, and Pizza Ranch uh, site. And in general, in October 2013, the plan, commotion, plan Commission was open to that type of amendment. From a staff level perspective, staff is open to the, this type of uh, zoning text amendment as these uses may be appropriate in the suburban commercial district with appropriate conditions. Outdoor commercial entertainment land uses have the greatest impact on residential areas. The closest residential area uh, to this site is over 1,000 feet away along Shady Bend Road. Uh, residential land uses are not anticipated in, in Liberty Business Park. Uh, so this outdoor commercial entertainment, the outdoor commercial entertainment land use uh, may be appropriate in this location just due to the fact of the uh, location of other people living in this area. Now the applicant is here tonight. Uh, they'd be happy to answer any questions. But staff does recommend the Planning Commission review the submitted materials and provide feedback to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Questions, comments, feedback from the Planning Commission? Mr. Horsfall, please. What's the tailgate area? Uh, KSW Construction. Uh, the tailgate party is basically an outdoor seating area where you bring your own chairs, 
uh, they put up a big TV and you sit around and watch the games. Just like being at a tailgate, like a field. Except we'll have it out there and they'll have a barbecue pit out there where it'll be fed either do it yourself or they'll do it for you. Will alcohol be served? It'll be a fenced in area with alcohol. No glass containers out there, it'll be just mostly you know, beer cups and stuff like that. Same thing as Wisconsin Brewery has outside with theirs. Okay, so there's not gonna be stadium seating? No, it's you don't bring your own chair seating. <laughs> Other feedback, Mr. Manley, please. Thank you. I, I think it's a, a, a good concept, and it, and it, I think it looks nice. I think the, 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 the limited drawings that we had, um, I think they have a nice look to them. I would agree with everything that Adam had said with respect to um, recommended improvements f for, for sort of the next uh, iteration of this. I guess one one question I did have: the, the applicant is uh, listed as um, or the as Liberty Development Corp. And I'm wondering: is is this restaurant going to be built uh, sort of on spec and sold to a chain? Or we have a a, a client that wants to rent the space from us. It already has an existing restaurant. We are not allowed to give out its name at this time until we get further down with the approval process. But we have a name and everything. Hopefully, we'll be able to share uh, by the time next time we come in for approval. Thank you. He's a local. He's not a chain. Or anything. Yeah, he's not a local. He's a local guy, not a chain restaurant. Okay. Other questions, comments, feedback? Go ahead, Jerry. I had one question for Adam. Uh, you know, we really like to engage our building with the street on Laser Street, and we've got that patio area kind of between the building and the street and that setback area. What can we do in that area? Because we'd really like, would like to do that patio area, patio area and kind of connect the building to the street going out along Laser. Is it the wall that's the problem, or actually the patio, or can we do anything there? I, 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 sir? I can take a closer look at the code. I mean, in general, okay. if it's the wall, I mean, it's usually the wall of the setback event. I mean, so typically, if it's if this was in the downtown overlay district, we would be encouraging you to do that, That's but right. <laughs> uh, this this district doesn't have the same type of requirements. But I'll take a I'll take a closer look tomorrow and just see if there's okay. any exceptions to that. <coughs> I, I don't believe there is, but um, the intent to kind of this is to keep it open and landscaped as, as green space. But I can see if there's anything in there that would allow some type of exception to that or allowance of that. Yeah, we'd be curious what that step would be because I think we would like to get you know again a little bit of activity on that side. Uh, Mr. Cerrado, the one question that I have, and I just say I, I really like this. I, I like the idea, and, and uh, you guys have been good to work with. I've been hearing a lot of positive comments about um, the types of businesses that you brought out there, how the buildings look, and um, you know what we're looking for. But a question for Mr. Sayre, if we're talking about having this type of a use here, what do you see as far as future use, uses then moving to the east of this site? Well, I think, you know, ultimately, it's one of the conversations we've had with, with the developer and we continue to work with the developer on. Currently, those areas are zoned sur suburban industrial. Um, I think as you extend along County Highway M w with that visibility there, I mean, I think you're going to be, and Mr. Slaby can correct me if I'm wrong, but probably similar looking buildings to what, what you have out there right now. Uh, I know uh, about a year ago, we, we took a look at a building uh, south of, of, of this site here with the restaurant. and. Um, it was very similar to the, the existing ones along M as well. So, um, you know, M does create that opportunity to, to provide, because of the access and the visibility, to provide some users that would like to have that visibility. Um, I think ultimately it's obviously up to the developer as we go forward here, but um, probably going east or looking at more of those typical suburban industrial type uses of, of that, what's allowed in that district. Well, for me personally, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what you bring back to us. Um, I'm confident that it'll be nice and uh, looking forward to have more businesses there. I was out there Saturday evening and it was packed again, so. We have more coming. <laughs> Any other, Mr. Horsfall, please? Um, I'm okay with Laser Road being straight. I, I am as well, I was gonna mention that. Thank you, Joe. 
No, thank you. It just doesn't match going down there. It makes our lots too small. Don't yeah. We? Yep, I'm, I'm fine with that. Thank you. Other feedback? If not, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are on agenda item number 10, which is also no action this evening. Um, plan development, concept plan located south of West Verona Avenue, west of West End Circle, and east of Wall Street and north of West End Apartments. The proposed PUD would allow for the construction of 15,000 square feet of commercial space and a 32-unit apartment building and a 10, house, uh, 10 townhouse units. Mr. Sarah, if you'd provide the background, please. Thank you. Uh, tonight is a PUD concept plan review. This is step two in the plan development process. Uh, the plan development process is a four-step process. Step one is a staff meeting is a meeting with staff. Uh, step two is a conceptual review before the plan commission and common council. Step three is the general development plan where zoning and entitlements are, are granted. And step four is the precise implementation plan where precise uh, building details and these site design requirements are submitted at, the, at that time. So this is step two. Uh, this is for discussion only, but this will go to the common council as well for discussion only. The applicant, uh, Steve Brown Apartments, is requesting a PUD uh, in the area as the mayor described. The area in question here is located, is highlighted in yellow on the screen. It's located immediately north of the uh, West End Apartments, which is also owned by uh, Steve Brown Apartments. Uh, as many, as some plan commissioners remember, and maybe some don't, uh, the West End has a very long history. Um, the general development plan for this project was approved in 2007 and amended in 2011. The 2011 amendment <clears throat> was necessary to provide, to allow for the construction of three apartment buildings immediately north of West End Circle. Uh, the construction of those three buildings, which are on the screen here, uh, was completed in 2013. In 2009, a precise implementation plan was approved for a UW Credit Union uh, to be located at the southwest corner of West End Circle and uh, Verona Avenue. Uh, that was approved by the city, but ultimately uh, that project did not go forward, and Steve Brown, Steve Brown Apartments has purchased that property. In 2013, the city did receive a request to construct a 40-unit apartment building with 2,100 square feet of commercial space along West End Circle. Uh, the proposed location of that project was uh, approximately in, in this location here. Uh, ultimately, that project uh, was not approved and did not go forward. Uh, and then in 2015, uh, the remaining kind of portion of this land located south of, of, of West End Circle, uh, south of here, and also south in the Erbach property as well, was purchased by the Verona Area School District. district. Um, so the proposed uh, Steve, Steve Brown Apartments development tonight requires that, that PUD from the city. Uh, here's the overall site of what has been built there to date. Uh, the proposed, excuse me, the three existing apartment buildings are located along the south side of the edge of this kind of development. Um, the proposed commercial, the 15,000 square feet of commercial, would be located along Verona Avenue. The proposed 32-unit uh, apartment building would be located in the southwest kind of quadrant of this development. And then the 10 townhouses would be located east of the, the apartment building. Um, from a, a bulk and, and setback standpoint, the original GDP granted zero lot line buildings for, for the development. Uh, staff is comfortable with a similar approach in, in this area of the development. I, I think if we don't take that approach, something's going to look out of place. I think uh, we do the fact that both the apartments located south of here and this proposed project are in close proximity. It'd be wise to have consistent setbacks and a consistent look to this project. So staff is, is comfortable with the building uh, location and placement, uh, and especially the, the zero lot line that would be consistent with the apartment buildings to the south. Uh, the applicant, from a parking standpoint, has provided 26 underground parking spaces for the, the 32 uh, unit apartment building. Um, the applicant is also providing uh, two car garages for the townhouse units which are in yellow on the screen before you. Um, one recommendation uh, from staff is that similar to other projects, the apartment uh, building should have at least one underground parking space per, per unit. Uh, it's a requirement that, we've, that I've recommended on 
other projects as well. It just ensures a, a high quality project and further ensures that each unit has uh, underground and covered space, which is, is desirable long term for, for any type of development like this. The proposed parking ratio for the commercial area provides a ratio of 4.13 spaces per 1,000 square feet of commercial space. Uh, this ratio is less than what we have typically looked at on East Verona Avenue. Uh, I think the difference here is the applicant is intending to make this more of a, a walkable type uh, development that would attract uh, the existing tenants from the apartment buildings um, and further trying to ensure that the site is not covered in, in, in a sea of parking. Uh, their intent is not to have a, a, to have a unique look to this on West Verona Avenue and not to match the look that's on East Verona Avenue. Further, the applicant uh, is considering to, or is willing to have shared parking with the existing apartment project to the south. Uh, there's currently 53 parking spaces uh, in this location here and 14 on the east side of the 33 unit building. Um, with that shared parking, there is more than enough uh, parking for both the apartments on the existing apartments and also the proposed apartments and commercial area. So staff has no concerns with, with the parking at this time. The applicant is proposing four access points uh, for this project. Uh, there are two existing access points along this shared uh, drive between the existing apartments and the proposed development. Um, the applicant is proposing a new access to Wall Street in the northwest corner here. Uh, staff does recommend that that become a, either goes away or becomes a right in, right out. Um, with the current configuration, that left hand turn uh, is, just, is just too close to the intersection at Verona Avenue. Uh, further, with this uh, northeast site or access point to West End Circle, uh, staff recommends that that become a, a right in only. I think the concern that we have is that if it's uh, if cars are exiting from this location, there's the high potential of, of U-turns uh, at that West End Circle there, which could, could create some potential traffic conflicts. Uh, I will point out that the uh, access point in this location in the future with the the future school district plans and development to the east, uh, most likely that medium will have to become uh, wider to accommodate the, the vehicles as, as traffic in this, in this location increases. Stormwater and drainage uh, details for this project will be reviewed uh, during future approvals. A stormwater, man excuse me, a stormwater pond was recently constructed southwest of this site by Vanta Corporation as part of their sale to the school district. Uh, I believe this site was, a com was planned for that, so we should have we should be able to easily accommodate stormwater in that location. The design of the project itself, the applicant is proposing to use uh, high quality materials uh, for the entire site. Uh, renderings were provided in, in your packet. On the screen before you are the are there potential uh, commercial uh, renderings along Verona Avenue. The applicant is proposing to use um, uh, stone and brick type materials. It would provide a unique look to the site. Uh, initially staff has no concerns with the, the look of the commercial buildings. Further, the proposed uh, townhouses, uh, the applicant did provide renderings of what those townhouses would look like. Uh, once again, the applicant is proposing stone and, and brick type materials, high quality materials that will, will blend with the commercial area as well too. Um, initially, as I said, staff has no concerns with the designs of these buildings, but the plan commission is encouraged to review the conceptual building designs and provide feedback to the applicant. The city does have a residential phasing policy that is in place. Uh, it's been in place since 2012, which limits the, the amount of multifamily that can be developed each year to 25 and 50 new multifamily units. There is an exception to this policy for mixed use development. Um, at the discretion, the council can, approved, uh, can approve projects above and beyond that 25 to 50 unit requirement. This proposed development has the potential to be exempted from the phasing policy, but I should point out the city currently has zero multifamily units allocated for 2016 and beyond. Uh, a few comments from, from, a, from a staff level perspective. Uh, staff is supportive of, of the development of, of these parcels as commercial and multifamily housing. Uh, the developer is proposing high, a high quality development that intends to incorporate the existing apartment buildings into a master planning of this area. Proposed development provides a strong commercial presence along Corona Avenue and provides a smooth transition from the commercial to the residential land uses. Uh, the applicant has identified the potential construction of a commercial building to start in early 2017. If this project moves forward to the next step, uh, staff and the developer need to discuss the phasing of the overall project. Uh, one of the initial comments from staff was, uh, if we are approving multifamily in this area and commercial, we'd like to see some type of uh, approvals tied together. So for example, if we're approving a certain number of multifamily units or buildings, 
uh, we'd like to ensure that we're getting uh, a certain square footage of commercial buildings as well. I think one of the issues we've had in the past in this area with a diff different developer, not this developer, but um, is not having that commercial development happen. I think you know we have the ability at this point to tie any type of future multifamily into that commercial development as well. So that's one, if this does move forward, that's one item that I, I would be recommending with, with, with any type of approvals. So that staff recommends the plan commission review the submitted materials and provide feedback to the applicant. I know the applicant's here tonight. I think they wanted to say a couple words. Good evening, good evening everyone, and um, thanks for your time tonight. Uh, my name is Dan Seeley. I'm the director of development for Steve Brown Apartments, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to say hi, introduce it myself. A couple of members of the team that are with me tonight, we have Scott Watson, the CFO from Steve Brown Apartments, and, and Shane Fry, our architect with Brown House. Um, Steve Brown Apartments has been developing and operating in and around the Madison area for about 35 years now. Um, as Adam indicated, we took our first step into Verona last year when we acquired the West End Apartments. Uh, we've been very happy with that acquisition and, and the direction that that's going so far, and, and we're very excited to, um, to continue uh, the investment in the city of Verona and the relationship with the city of Verona with this development and, and proposal that we have in front of you guys. Uh, we're very much looking forward to the discussion, any feedback that you have at this point. Um, as Adam indicated, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. And thanks again for your time tonight. Thank you. Questions, comments, feedback? Uh, maybe I'll just start out with one. I think it was uh, a key point that Adam made when we talked about the phasing and the uh, the commercial part of that. Do you want to speak to that issue a little, uh, issue a little bit and, and as to what you're considering as far as the phasing approach? Certainly. We are, um, we're very aware of the, the history that goes along with the West End site and we're sensitive to that. Um, our initial intention would be, should this project move forward, that we would deliver um, uh, an initial uh, retail bay um, constructed on spec. That would be the first thing that we would push forward and that would be uh, immediately in 2017 or as soon as approvals allowed for. As we move forward, we would continue to bring forward commercial components um, primarily in front of the residential developments with the residential developments tailing along behind the commercial and would be more than willing to work with staff uh, and the planning commission on uh, recommendations and, and um, determinations for that type of phasing. But the intention is certainly to have commercial lead the way. Thank you. Other feedback? Mr. Manley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Thanks for being here tonight. Uh, I think that the, the renderings for the proposed commercial buildings look really nice. Um, I, I think it would be exciting to, to have some additional retail on West Verona Avenue. Um, I've been on the plan commission since 2006, and we've been trying to get some commercial out there ever since I've been on the plan commission. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I share the mayor and, and uh, Mr. Sayers' comments about um, the phasing of, of commercial. I, I guess I look at this from, from the lens of, of a city um, uh, plan commission member who is a little bit frustrated with what I think is some missed opportunities we've had to utilize our West Verona Avenue um, corridor for commercial development. And I, I think, to be honest, as a, as a city, I think we, we made a mistake in allowing for institutional uh, use and by the school district to go along, um, you know, this highly developable corridor I mean you can you can put residential just about anywhere in a city you can put a school just about anywhere but you know location 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 when it comes to commercial um, and I, I think that we as a city have been allowing too much non-commercial development in areas that we should be reserving for commercial because our commercial areas or at least the areas that are you know along our our, our you know main uh, corridors it, it's it's just such a, a finite number and you know now we're again looking at 
on, on North Main Street looking at putting housing along, along North Main instead of commercial, which I think is a mistake. Um, so I guess I'm, while I'm incredibly supportive of your concept for bringing commercial onto this, this property, um, I'm not as excited about bringing the residential piece of it. You know, I, I remember when we had the, the the debate about changing the um, the zoning for the for the Urbach property to institutional for the school. You know, one of the one of the things that the school was quick to to say, and what what the the folks from Vanta were quick to say was, well, you're going to have all of this other area that's going to be available for commercial development. Um, and so don't worry about the fact that you're going to take the the bulk of it off of the tax rolls and you're not going to be able to utilize some of your prime commercial space for commercial use you're going to have this other good sized chunk of land and and now you know here we are and about half of it is is being proposed for residential so i i guess i'm not I would prefer to see the whole thing be be commercial. Um, that said, I guess I would also just make a comment um, on the parking. I'm not sure that the, the that the parking is adequate there, and I I I know that Adam had said, well, you know, the intent here is that this is going to be a walkable area, but I don't think that the existing apartment buildings and the ones proposed here are going to support 15,000 square feet of commercial space. I'm guessing that you're anticipating that people will patronize these commercial establishments who don't live in the <laughs> apartment complexes. Um, so I do, I am a little bit concerned. I mean, I think it's laudable that you looked at you know how can we put some green space in here and not turn this thing into a giant asphalt slab i think that's that's a really commendable thing to do but um i i don't think it's adequate um and i'm and i'm not sure that especially in the winter that the idea of you know if i want to visit a um, a retail establishment situated adjacent to Verona Avenue that I'm going to go park back in the existing parking lot for those apartment complexes and, and walk there. Um, I'm not sure that's a great solution. Um, so I don't want I don't want to you know to, you to walk away thinking I'm, I'm down on this project because I think it's I think it's a really neat and it's exciting and um, but I think that there are some challenges with, from from my standpoint of of bringing additional residential into a, onto a parcel that I think should be dedicated to commercial, um, and and then the parking and then the parking doesn't even if you said well gosh I I agree let's let's take those townhouses in that 32 unit building and turn it all into commercial you, that still doesn't you're still going to have parking issues I suspect mm. um, so I'm not sure how that you know how you deal with that but that's where I that's that's my perspective on it thanks for the feedback other comments additional feedback mr. Horsfall please uh, I agree with mr. Uh, mr. Manley about this one and you know being on the Planning Commission for a while and seeing residential proposed in this area is kind of again we're looking at commercial and it's again prime commercial locations and you know, challenges probably to try to sell that to the whoever the uh, people that would move in there um, and again you can't be faulted for previous developers promises but Please. you know one of the things they you know we build these apartments and boom commercial will come and so then when you propose residential within areas that we think is good for commercial it's kind of hard to swallow mm -hmm. um, just a little bit about the access um, with the potential for the schools coming in having the right in right out 
it's going to be, I think, a problem that Adam pointed out. And so running things more, you know, not have the right in, right out, but have the access to the south, matching up with the, the existing driveways, whatever that is, is going to work better than try to run them out to the east and west. Speaking specifically of the right in, right out on, on uh, west for, or, uh, the west end circle? Right. Both east. of those accesses are going to be, I think, potentially in the long run with how much traffic is going to be coming in with the schools that it seems like access is going to have to come to the south to that property um, that you know there's going to be a lot of people coming in out of that area so it's going to make it run smoother i think but anyways that's my opinion other feedback just a little on my thoughts and i think what has swayed me uh, more to support the project is I agree with Mr. Manley that I would like to see more commercial there. I think ultimately that's what we'd all like to see. But frankly, that commercial is not going to happen unless there's enough people there to make it be successful. So uh, with that being said, I think it uh, it's a jump start to West Verona Avenue uh, of what can occur in other places. Um, for me, the big thing is, and I know that I've had head conversations um, is is the point that we talked about before the phasing of the commercial um, in alignment with the uh, you know with the uh, with the residential I mean it would be great if all the commercial could be built um, you know mm -hmm. right up front but to me that's key so it's that the more and more I think about it um, the more and more supportive I am of the project uh, like I said I think uh, the two major things for me is that the commercial probably wouldn't occur unless there is some more residential, there's more traffic there. Um, and I believe it also will jumpstart other activities on the western side of the city. Thank you. Other feedback? I'm not, go ahead, Mr. Horsfall. I just can't, you know, that's, that's just repeating what we've heard in the past. You know, we had two apartments there. We put another apartment in there. It'll generate commercial. And we put in some more apartments, townhouses. It's going to generate commercial. It's, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, Mr. Mayor, but it's, you know, it's the same old line that I, you know, and I don't know what the statistics are. There's three apartments with lots of units there. Why isn't that enough to start generating some commercial in this area? I don't. And that's probably for a developer to answer, but you know we kind of keep hearing that line all the time. Bring in some more residential, and boom, commercial is going to happen. And it's just, it just it hasn't worked. And that's, I, you know, it's. And I I understand your point, but it's, you know, uh, I don't know how to. Yeah. Uh, get no. Out there. And and I know what you're saying, and it's. And I agree with you on a lot of those points, but. I would hate to be sitting here 10 or 15 years from now and us having the c same conversation about, um, you know, why, isn't ha why hasn't this all built up in commercial? Um, the key, again, I, I think for me the real key here is that there's an agreement that the commercial development would occur in a phased approach with the residential. Mm -hmm. And so we're not looking at, it would be a big problem for me personally if we started building the townhouses and the apartment buildings and then a year or two later, we heard, well, we don't think commercial is going to work there, so we want to fill the whole thing in. Right. That's not what I'm hearing. No. We're that, committed to the commercial. Yeah, that's, that's not what I'm hearing. And then the other part that I didn't say before, and, and not just recently, but a while ago, um, I did take a look at your website, and I, and I listened to some of the testimonials of people that are living in your complexes, mm -hmm. and everything that I've heard from the people that I've talked to when it comes to owning and managing multifamily in this area, there's no one that does it better than Steve Brown Apartments. Mm. So that, that also is a major factor for me. That's very much appreciated. Thank you. Just Go ahead, Mr. One other quick question. Um, of your three apartment buildings there, yeah. what is the occupancy of them? I don't have the occupancy numbers handy off the top of my head. I can provide those. I know that we've been very happy with the purchase and the investment um, in terms of maintaining occupancy. Um, oftentimes when there's a transition of management, uh, dips are inevitable and we haven't experienced that over the last year. Um, I, I 
I'm happy to, to, to help out with some of that, but I don't have those numbers handy off the top of my head. And I'm more just curious. No, of course, of course. Mr. Sarah, please. I think one thing that I'll just point out with this concept as well, one of the comments I've, I've heard from people repeatedly on East Road Avenue is they don't like some of the establishments that are potentially going there with the drive through uses and some of the fast food going there as well. I think, you know, what the applicant is proposing here is, is very, excuse me, very different than kind of what we have on that on that side of town as well. I think there is some, 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 some benefit to this as well. I think also with, you know, kind of what has been said in the past, I know it's, and I, I advised the applicants of kind of the, the history of this property. We've gone through that a few times as well, but I think it, I, you know, that developer is no longer here as well. I, that developer has sold his mm -hmm. entire interest in this entire project. So, I mean, I think we have a new developer here. Um, I think that it does have a history, but I would just encourage the Planning Commission to understand there is a history to it, but hopefully we can kind of start looking looking past that because that's the one thing I I know I keep hearing my, my three and a half years here. I've heard that just repeatedly every time we have a project in the site is uh, there's a history here. And it's just, I, I, sometimes I, I struggle with, I feel like we can't we can't get over that. And I think at some point, you know, if it's the right project, I would just encourage the Planning Commission to try to, to look look beyond that a little bit and understand there is a history here, but it's, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's, it's better for better or for worse, it's just not going to happen. So that would be my only encouragement as well. So. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Mr. Manley, please. Thank you. I, I guess I'd, I'd be interested to hear your perspective on the viability of commercial at this location. I mean, when, when we looked at doing commercial here, um, you know, back in 2006, when Jerry Wibben owned the property before Terrence Wall, mm -hmm. um, I mean, since that time, we probably had 150 houses built just to the north in the Meister subdivision. We've put three very large apartment units actually on the parcel um, and you know the epic campus has grown to like 7,000 employees or 8,000 or whatever they're up to I mean if are we like literally after that many housing units and uh, you know employees of epic and so forth it, it's like a few townhouses and 132 unit apartment building that's going to tip the balance over and now it's viable I, I mean it just I just I'm just really struggling with the gosh the only way we can get commercial on this is if we build even more multifamily mm -hmm. I mean it, if if epic and the neighborhood that built up to the north and the existing multifamily isn't enough to support commercial right there. I mean, is it capable of supporting commercial? Mm -hmm. We're excited about the location um, in terms of a commercial opportunity. Uh, we, I think we view the West End and that particular location as a potential gateway to Verona, particularly to downtown Verona. And uh, we've been watching Verona. We have employees who live in Verona, employees who grew up in Verona. Um, we're excited to get on board and be a part of where Verona's going, both in terms of plans for the downtown, uh, the actual downtown intersection, which I, I and we believe the West Verona Avenue is an extension of. Um, one of the things about us as a developer is when we develop something, we typically build the hold. We very rarely sell. Um, and so that we view this as a long-term investment and we wouldn't be making that long-term investment if we didn't believe in the viability of commercial at that location. Um, and so I think that speaks to uh, our view in terms of whether or not we think commercial can make it at that location. Um, I'm not sure if Scott has any comments he'd like to add. Hello. Uh, sure, just in response to the uh, whether or not the, the additional residential is needed to make commercial vi viable at that site, I would say that um, we're looking at more of a holistic uh, site activation approach there. And when we look at that site in its entirety and we look at the future of that site with the school district behind it, probably, 
we look at the commercial fronting the, the Verona Avenue needing to transition into the other uses that are to the south of it. So we're looking at um, a soft transition with, with low density residential units between what are basically mid-density residential units at the existing West End Apartments and then the commercial. So it's more about, it's more about activating the site as a whole in a, in a sort of master plan sort of way than it is about, gosh, we just can't build commercial unless we have 10 more units. That's not, that's not what that's about. Thank you. Any additional questions, comments, feedback? Hopefully you've uh, gained some, some feedback that was helpful and um, urge you to continue working with staff and look forward to seeing you again. Thanks Thank for the you. comments. Thank you. We are now on agenda item number 11, which is discussion and possible action regarding certified survey map to create one lot and one outlot at 101 North Main Street and 100 East Verona Avenue. If we were to take action, this would be a recommendation to the Common Council. Mr. Sarah, please. Uh, thank you. The request tonight is from the city to uh, move forward on a CSM for the, the Matt's House property. This property is located at the northeast corner of Main and Verona Avenue. The city acquired this property in March of 2015 as a portion of the property is needed for potential future right-of-way intersection improvements. In February 2016, the city issued a request for proposals relating to the existing structure that is on the property as it is currently not needed uh, for right-of-way. And in April 2016, the council voted to accept a proposal from Troy Rost to restore the existing structure on the property. Staff and Mr. Rost continue to work on developer's agreement and deed restriction for the property. Uh, to help with the legal descriptions within those agreements, uh, staff would like to move forward and with the CSM. Mr. Ross is comfortable that, with that as well. Uh, the proposed CSM would create uh, Lot 1, which at, in the future date would be sold to, to Mr. Ross. Uh, out Lot 1, which would be retained in ownership by the city for future right-of-way purposes. Uh, and then there's also a approximate 1,000 square feet in the northwest corner that would be dedicated to the public for right away immediately and the intent of that is to provide uh, access to the, to the lot one to provide legal access to the site itself um, the pro csm meets the ordinance requirements uh, further further the dedication does provide the required uh, minimum lot frontage for lot number one so that staff recommends the planning commission recommend to the common council approval of the csm to create one lot and one out lot at 101 north main and 100 East Rona Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Sayre. Questions, comments, potential motions? Mr. Horsfall, please. So, Adam, have we, do we know what the intersection is gonna look like? Which I'm getting at is, is outlaw one provide enough coverage to whatever, it, A, have we chosen a direction there? And B, is if it's something else, can we still have enough? Do we have to do this again? I guess is what I'm getting at. Mr. Sarah, please. Uh, the intent of the downtown plan was for this to be a larger traffic signal. So pretty much when we looked at Outlot One, we took a look at the the plan that MSA helped us work on, and also AECOM took a look at it as well. And the the 20 approximately 20, 21, 22 foot outlot is is wide enough to accommodate the the turn lane that would be added to that location. So. Uh, the long-term plan would have a, a, a right-hand turn lane coming west on, on this part of Rhone Avenue, and that would be turn, allow you to turn north onto North Main Street in the, in the future. I think the question is still out there of, especially in the public, of if and when this intersection improvement will be needed. I think especially depending on what happens with, with the high school uh, on the north side. But I know uh, Mr. Gunlock and I have been, well, before he retired we, we were working on this uh, pretty much since the day we acquired it and, and I know Bob mr. Gunlock took a re reviewed it at that time and said it was more than sufficient to to accommodate our, our, our future needs so we we feel pretty pretty comfortable with uh, what we have here obviously we'd have to acquire additional right away to the east and north and but if it if it were to change in the future um, 
it's yeah it depends on what it would change to I know we talked about a roundabout we talked about paired one ways um, obviously with paired one ways you probably wouldn't even need this much right away the roundabout if you recall was skewing very heavily to the southeast and taking out most of the buildings along the south side of Vernon Avenue there um, so I think potentially this might even take less right away if it was a roundabout um, but initially with what we've planned on this location we are we are comfortable with the, the all lot that is being retained thanks <clears throat> and just uh, in addition to what mr. Sarah said in order to make the complete improvement of that intersection we'd probably be taking uh, uh, gaining some additional right away to the south on that on the southeast quadrant of that intersection as well yeah questions comments Potential motions. Mr. Horsfall, please. This time I'd like to recommend to the Common Council approve the certified survey map. Just create one lot and one out lot at 101 North Main Street and 100 East Brown Avenue. We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Turk. Questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the motion? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Next, we have discussion. Uh, we're not looking at any action on zoning ordinance amendment relating to commercial animal boarding land uses. Mr. Sarah, please. Thank you. At the June uh, 2016 Plan Commission, the Plan Commission held an initial review for a proposed uh, dog daycare business uh, in the Vernon Technology Park. Section 13-1-89 parens J of the zoning ordinance re regulates these types of uses. Um, the plan commission at the at the June meeting directed staff to come back at some point with uh, potential amendments to to address some discrepancies that we have in the ordinance. The discrepancy that we have it relates to the outdoor play areas. So the ordinance is rather ambiguous as it relates to that. So in in your packet there is a, a red line version of the commercial animal boarding uh, section from the from the, the zoning ordinance and what I've attempted to do in the description is to uh, clean up the definition by uh, having the examples listed including commercial kennels and dog daycares and then striking commercial stables as a potential uh, use in there and then we'd also strike the last sentence of there which that used to state animal boarding facilities and activities which except for parking areas are completely and continu continuously contained indoors are subject to a separate set of regulations so that would be proposed to be striked um, further uh, potentially we would add uh, two conditions uh, onto the conditional use part of this one of those conditions would be outdoor exercise area shall not be located within 300 feet of a residentially residentially zoned property and B uh, the hours of operation for outdoor areas shall be limited daily from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, just attempting to establish some hours of operation restrictions and conditions in this area. Uh, further, we would strike the minimum permitted size of a horse or similar animal stall uh, at a thousand at a hundred square feet. Um, so that's the kind of the initial draft to kind of clean up the the ordinance. As we kind of my understanding is how we discussed at that the June Plan Commission meeting. And I guess I'd be open to any feedback or suggestions that the Plan Commission has. Questions, comments, feedback? Mr. Manley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Adam, uh, the, the condition that prohibits outdoor play areas within 300 feet of an area zoned residential um, would, two, two questions. First of all, are you aware of any um, of these types of facilities that are currently located within 300 feet of an area zoned residential and the second question would be if there's a change in zoning within 300 feet of an existing um, animal boarding facility that would result in a, a zoning within 300 feet would that would that mean that that the outdoor area would no longer be allowed mr. Sarah please uh, sure so the first part of am I aware of any these first we don't we don't have any outdoor facilities in the city right now 
Um, so no, I'm not aware of any any facility. But I, I guess let me re-ask the question: Any facility that involves the care of animals that could potentially have one if we were correct having a, a less ambiguous um, ordinance than what we already have on the books. We obviously have the one on, on Half Mile Road, which we have the gentleman in the audience representing. Uh, that one would, would conform potentially to this 300 foot requirement. Um, and looking at just veterinarian clinics and of, of those kind of natures, we have one on uh, West Front Avenue that I'm aware of that probably would not be able to have that due to the fact that residential is located across the street. Uh, we have one in, in the Vincenzo Plaza development, a, a vet clinic. I don't believe they do boarding. Not another example, which I don't believe they'd be able to do that just because of uh, the distance and space needs. Um, I don't have animals at home, so I'm not fully <laughs> familiar with all the animal sites in town. Uh, but you know, the second part of the question is if we were to rezone a property within 300 feet, what would they have to stop the use? No, uh, the use would become legal non-conforming at that time. So uh, if the use were ever to the outdoor play area were ever to cease operations, from a time period of more than one year, uh, the grandfathering of that use would then would then go away. Uh, it would cease to exist. So um, it wouldn't impact it unless the operations were to, were to cease on that. The 300 feet, I should note, was uh, just a number that, that that I came up with that I felt was reasonable. I, I will note for public hearing notices, we do notify all property owners within 200 feet. That was an, another number that I did toy with as a potential on that, but the 300 was a, to be honest, was an arbitrary number that felt reasonable. So <clears throat> just a, just a follow-up question then. So the, um, the, the Fairfield is obviously zoned commercial. So even though there are people that would be occupying that building from time to time over, on an overnight basis, that wouldn't that wouldn't trigger this. The, there's a there's a property on the corner of West Verona Avenue and Nine Mound, um, uh, adjacent to the to the bank. I'm wondering if that's within 300 feet. Well, I think with regard to the the business out there on, on Half Mile, first of all, they're they're currently zoned industrial, um, so they would have to rezone to some type of commercial type of use. To, to even kind of accommodate this use. Um, I, I can verify, I, I, I did check, that was one that I did check with, within 300 feet and I thought they were okay with the properties on uh, West Rhone Avenue, but it's probably one that we'd want to, which I'd probably want to double check that before we put something in place. But no, the Fairfield would not, not apply. The intent was to focus, you know, just on properties that are zoned residential. All right, thank you. Other feedback? Mr. Horsfall, please. So is animal defined in the ordinance? Animal, we don't have any chickens in the city of Verona, do we? No. That would be considered animal boarding? <clears throat> you know, I know Madison has some stuff, but I don't, I'm just asking more than I'm concerned with it, but the short, short answer is we do a f define animal and it breaks down to animal units and it depends on the size of the animal. Um, so obviously horses count and cattle count as I think believe one unit. Then if you start talking chickens and poultry and pigs, they come into a different type of ratio. In short, those type of uses are considered farm uses. So for outdoor areas, those are confined to a farm itself and properties are zoned to uh, egg. Um, you know, the ordinance, I believe, doesn't go into dogs or domesticated animals, which I think you could, you could argue a chicken and somebody could domesticate it. But the intent of the ordinance is that, you know, a dog is considered and a cat is considered a typical household animal, you know, okay. chickens aren't. So no, we're not, we're not, we're not wading into that discussion inadvertently as part of this. <laughs> I was just curious. I'm fine with 300 feet, but you know. I also do not have a pet at home, so I don't mm -hmm. know the places. Any additional feedback? If not, Adam, you'll be bringing this back to a future agenda. Okay. 
So no action there. We are now on agenda item number 13. Also no action. Uh, discussion regarding zoning ordinance amendment relating to the maximum living space requirements of the community residential zoning districts. Mr. Sarah, please. Thank you. So the CR district requires, establishes a maximum living space for dwellings within the CR zoning district, uh, which basically states that dwellings can have a maximum living space of <coughs> 1,900 square feet, excluding garages and finished basements, and single story dwellings within that district can have a maximum square feet of 1,600 square feet. So we, we've capped the square footage that is allowed uh, on houses in those in those districts. Um, each year, this is an issue for myself and the building inspection department of working with property owners to make adjustments to their plans on their and their improvements to their to their property. And my understanding, and this was put in place long before I came here, but the intent was on limiting the square footage to provide entry level housing options in in, in the city. Uh, I think that's a, a was a nice intent. Uh, I don't believe that has actually turned out to the long-term intentions of what we really wanted in this. I think it's turned into uh, challenges for both staff, obviously, just administrating this, and I think it's turned into challenges from um, property owners as well looking to make improvements. I have someone right now in Hawthorne Hills where we, we denied her permit uh, as she was looking to expand her three-bedroom house into a four-bedroom house. And she emailed me today and is asking how she can be involved in this process. But um, she says, we've been struggling this past spring and summer. I'm working with a builder and Todd, the former building inspector, on the possibility of adding on to our structure. We love our location and neighborhood and don't want to expand dramatically knowing that the plans could possibly be approved. As you probably know, probably know, if we sell, it's very hard to find a comparable lot in the same vicinity of the school and daycare we currently are enrolled in. So moving is just not something we really want to pursue at this time. So the concern obviously is they're trying to expand their house. They just can't do it because they've already maxed out the square footage of, of what's allowed by the ordinance. You know, what staff is looking for here is a recommendation from the plan commission or direction from the plan commission uh, we have two issues. One, living space in the ordinance has never been defined. So we've arbitrarily kind of interpreted this over the years. You know, one could argue that as we look at this, we should be extracting out hallways and closets. And that was kind of some of the ideas we threw around. And I, I think the comment I made at one point was if we're doing that, then what's the point of this? If we're going that far as a staff on this, we're obviously drastically are altering this ordinance and we should really have the direction from plan commission either to have staff define this living space so we can clearly tell people this is what a living space is or just completely strike this requirement whatso whatsoever my, my recommendation is just to strike the requirement i think you know if the intent was the entry level housing you know it potentially does that uh, just because of, of 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 smaller lot sizes but i think with the challenges we have in the city right now especially with housing it's a crunch and i think as this person emailed me, I think it's it's an issue that is out there. So I, I, I guess I'm I'm looking for direction and feedback from the plan commission of what staff should do. I think at a minimum we have to at least define the direct staff to define a living space. But I think the ultimate question here is if the intent of this or if we don't believe the intent of this ordinance is still applicable or should be applicable, then we should just strike it and move on from it. But I guess I'm looking for that feedback right now <coughs> so uh, mr. sir my first question is um, we're still looking at uh, they would have to abide by the by light lot uh, by um, lot line side lots back lots all that it would still have to meet those requirements correct correct I'd, I'd be fine with just getting rid of it that'd be my personal opinion Mr. Horsfall? Well, this has been a really long process. So in 2001, I think it is, when, did you look through the meeting minutes from a long time ago when this came up? I, I, I looked I looked for a file, but to be honest, before Bruce got here, some of the files just aren't as complete as I'd like them to be. I mean, I, so I, I looked initially from about 2003 on and didn't see much. I found some old memos, but I wasn't sure what was official and what was unofficial. And that's why I didn't want to, try to touch too much on the history because it just wasn't clear on what was accurate and was it not accurate. So it was just what you said. It was like 2000, 2001. We wanted to give an entryway into smaller houses so people could move into that versus, you know, 
the NR neighborhood residential. So, you know, when we pick, try to do it, when you did um, plotting your areas that you'd have some areas that would be the CR would be like a transition. So you move from multifamily to CR to NR basically would be the, the thought process. So this discussion about living space was very, um, we had a lot of discussion about that, about finishing your basement. Does that add to your living space? And then does that throw you out of, should you deny somebody's, you know, permit to, you know, finish a guy's basement? So there's a lot of discussion about that. So Mr. Mayor had provided really what we're looking for is we wanted the lot, the limits to be um, based on um, the setback distances. So that, you know, you have a smaller size house, the theory would be is smaller cost to move, be moving into it. And some of the developers liked it because they could put more lots onto property, build more houses, and potentially make more money that way versus having neighborhood residential. So I don't know if you've heard feedback from the developers at all about this, but it, to me, I don't know how many times you get this request to you know, fix their living space. Um, but I, I think it's, a, it's more tools in the toolbox that people are, some, can move into something that maybe they can't afford an NR, but they can form a CR. Um, so I'm, I've always been kind of in favor of it because it provides a mixed balance of housing in the, in the city. I mean, we, if you were to estimate how much CR we have, I mean, there's not that much really, probably. So, I, appre I appreciate that historical perspective because I wasn't on the planning commission at the time, so I appreciate that. You can ask Steve Sailing about it sometime. Okay, I will. <laughs> Mr. Manley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I haven't been on the plan commission as long as, as Mr. Horsefall has, but um, when I found out about the zoning classification when I first got on the plan commission, I thought, well, this is dumb. I mean, do we really think the people sitting around this horseshoe are going to, by ordinance, be able to you know, socially engineer the size of people's homes and make them affordable when there's so much variability that goes into the price of a home that is unrelated to how many square feet it is. And I can build a half million dollar home that's 1,500 square feet, depending on the level of trim and so forth. I, I just think it makes no sense. I, I think you've got to let the market decide what people want to build. Um, I mean, my goodness, we built a brand new elementary school in 2000 because we had so much entry level housing already that families were having elementary school kids. I mean, I think the idea that the only way that somebody can buy an affordable house is in Verona is if we place limitations on how build they can or how big they can build it is just, you know, completely ignores the fact that w we've got probably hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, of homes in this city that are priced at the median or less in Dane County, you know, for the for the median priced home. Um, I, I don't think. I think we're kidding ourselves, and I think history has, has proved this out. We're kidding ourselves if we think we can engineer the price of a home with our zoning code. The market's going to determine, uh, you know, the price of a home based on what people are willing to pay for it. And I, I just, we, we, I mean, if if there's any th diversity of housing stock that we're missing in Verona, it's that we don't have a, a lot of like really high value homes. I mean, we, we've got a lot of starter homes and we've got a lot of sort of that next intermediate step up from starter homes, but we don't have a whole lot of like large, you know, for somebody who wants an, like an executive size home, we just don't ha really have much of that. 
housing stock in our city. Um, I, I'd be in favor of just completely eliminating the zoning classification itself. Um, next best thing would be eliminating the square footage requirement. Mr. Horsfall, I, I don't want to get into a big argument about this, but it, it, if you have a 1,600 square foot and you talk to a builder, they're just going to say it's $120 a, linear, a square foot. If you have 1,800, they're going to say for a spec home, it's going to be, you know, 1,800 square foot times 120. So how can you say in the lot smaller? So I don't understand how you can't equate size of the lot, size of the house to economy. It just, you know, if you look at the how houses are selling, the ones that are smaller are going to sell for lower prices. So I, I don't understand how you, I mean, you could spend a, a million dollars, like you said, on a 1,500 square foot house, but who's going to want to price himself, not price themselves, but build something that nice in when your neighbor has a spec home? So it's a true point, but I think, you know, when you talk about statistics, the smaller houses sell for less money. The bigger houses sell for more money and bigger lots. So it does provide some economic avenue from someone to move from a townhouse or an apartment into a house. I mean, if you look at Kettle Creek, those houses, I'm sure, are selling for less than the ones that are zoned neighborhood residential. So, and, you know, there's some CR that's around the, but there's some there. And those would sell for less than the ones that are NR. So I'm just, I, I'm in favor of keeping it because I think it, it does provide some variability to the housing market. Thank you. Any additional feedback? Again, Adam, this will be another issue that you'll put on a future agenda. Probably didn't get as much feedback as you wanted, but you've you've got some feedback. So, and I'll have a conversation with Mr. Salek. Um, okay, no action. We are now on agenda item 14, which is reports and comments from the planning department. Mr. Sayre, please. Uh, the only comment I have tonight is the boundary agreement was adopted a couple weeks ago with the town of Rona. So there will be some uh, changes in the kind of the ETJ CSMs that. Well, well, we'll no longer come to the Planning Commission. So uh, we will be updating our uh, ETJ ordinance in the near future here to be consistent with the agreement that we adopted with the town. So, um, so that's, that's good news for the city. But that's, that's all I have for tonight. Okay, next we have reports and comments from Planning Commission members. Are there any reports this evening from anyone? Mr. Manley, please. Thank you. Um, I had asked at the last meeting if we had a alignment of what nine mound was going to look like and i never heard anything back on that do we yeah do we do we know what that is mr sir i i forgot about that one so i, I apologize um i can talk to i guess miss fisher and i can talk and we can get you something emailed out to the whole planning commission just so you can see that but it is it is done and we can send you some so i apologize for excellent that. thank you any other questions or comments? Seeing none, um, our next meeting would be August 1st. It would be the first Monday in August. With that, if there's no other business, a motion to adjourn would be in order. We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Turk. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried, and we are adjourned.